Killer band behind him, co-headlining with Death Clock uh, from Adult Swim's Metalocalypse, and support from virtuoso guitarist Jason Richardson. There's a lot to go around here. Tickets, info, everything else at axs.com. The show is Wednesday, September 6th at the Agora. And caller 10, these tickets are yours. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. It's not every day you hear him complain about something. Wait. Uh, yes, it is. Alan Cox. On 100.7 double. All these, like, Asian, Japanese, Korean bands, they're very, very... Um, gimmicky? Well, they're yeah, gimmicky, but they're also just very manufactured, and so baby metal. But for whatever reason, boy, they struck a chord with uh, a certain portion of the audience. There's probably some Japanese fetishists in there, too, but... Uh, uh, perhaps. <laughs> maybe there so. Might be. Might be. Um, and Death Clock, of course, is an animated band. So uh, it should be a wild show, though. I kind of like to go just out of curiosity. Well, I don't think I can do... I saw them at uh, Rock on the Range one year, and that was enough. Death Clock or Baby Metal? Baby Metal. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 The band is awesome. The girls just kind of run around and, mm-hmm. you know, do their thing. But. <laughs> Give me the talk on it. <laughs> hey, Eric. Yeah, hello, Alan. What's going on? Hate the show. Thank you, sir. So I got into a little bit of a, a dilemma the other day, and as a, uh, a tastemaker of Cleveland, I was wondering if I could possibly get your uh, your opinion on this situation. Wait, you're calling me a tastemaker of Cleveland? You heard him. <laughs> I, I, I wow. Say so. I guess it's the first time for everything. Might- All right, what's the problem? So... I went to the bar around noon uh, to go watch a little basketball game on my lunch break the other week and had to go to the bathroom, ended up clogging the toilet. And, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I consider the bartender a, a friend of mine. And so when we locked eyes and I told him what had happened, we didn't know what to do because I don't want him, you know, serving drinks all day after having done something like that, but I also couldn't do it because I was on the clock. So, I Oh, did, I, 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 I see. You do. you were taking a break from work, so you had to get back yes. to work, and you had left a real stump in there. And oh, it was, it was horrible, you didn't, yeah. didn't want to go back to your boy behind the bar and go, hey, man, sorry, but there's he was the only one on duty, if you will. There was nobody only, else. Only one there. And yeah. I was the only customer. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Well, then, then you weren't. You think I should have done. Then you weren't taking then him. Happened. Then you weren't taking him away from other people. I mean, um, I don't know. No, but I don't want. I don't want to know that. Ha- like I have his, his phone number, so I don't want to go through my life knowing he had to do something like that on his work day. Yeah, you throw so him. I was in you throw him, a dilemma. Yeah, you throw him fifty bucks for the trouble. And uh, what what did you do? Well, I went in there myself, and I was in there 40 minutes, and that toilet would not budge. And then <laughs> I know 40, he timed these it. Little, these little pieces of plastic started coming up, and I'm like, that's not for me. Turned out a hooligan had stuck a bar of soap in a plastic bag and shoved it in that oh, toilet, so it wasn't even my fault at all. Right. All right. So, so are yeah, you? So, so that, you did get happened. it. You, you found the soap and unclogged the commode. Oh, oh no, the toilet is gone. They had to remove it. Oh, because it got way stuck in there. Why would yeah, do there, that? there's no toilet there. People are bad. Well, then the yeah, silver lining sense. is, um, Eric, you're the last person to poop in that bar's toilet. I didn't even think of that. It's exciting. That's my silver lining. You wanted my take? That's my take. You were the last guy to drop a deuce in that toilet. <laughs> It's like the opposite of a marriage. It's like the end is something. Okay, I can live with yes. that. All right, good. Well, listen, as long as you can live okay. with it, Eric, I can too. Thank you. All right, there you go. There's Eric out in Summit County who I didn't know what I was going to tell him, but uh, listen, it hadn't even occurred to him.
Around these parts, one of our favorite shows is I Think You Should Leave Mm -hmm. uh, on Netflix. Tim Robinson, of course. I like it. Mary loves it. Tim Robinson, who uh, was uh, kind of a non-issue at Saturday Night Live. He was there for one season, didn't get much to do. Might have been there for a couple. He was only there one season as a performer. I think they might have hired him as a writer. And then he got on camera. But between Detroiters, which is one of my very favorite shows... But it was only on for a couple of seasons. It was him and um, and Sam, Sam Robertson. Richardson. Robertson and R- Richardson? Sorry. Yeah. Richardson and Robinson. Um, and he's shown up a lot in I Think You Should Leave because they're pals. And for whatever reason, I Think You Should Leave is such a weird show that it's really struck a chord with people who are just into that weird, ridiculous kind of – it's not always funny. It's, it, can, it can be very hot and cold with very this show. Very cringy. But there's enough stuff that makes it good. There's a weekend sportscaster at WGN in Chicago, a guy named uh, Josh Friedman. And you see this a lot where weather guys will pepper their reports with pop culture references. There's a lot of Baba Booey's and things like that. But this, this very guy, popular with uh, Sports Center back in the day, too, where they throw right. in little references when they were doing sports highlights. That's where Boom Goes the Dynamite came from. Um, but uh, this guy peppered um, his sports cast with, I think you should, I'm not going to play the whole thing. I grabbed this this morning, but here's some of it here. Preseason football, sort of like. Because, again, it doesn't mean anything to people who don't know the show. But to us, uh, if you get the references, it's fun. Preseason football, sort of like a cosmic gumbo. Some plays almost <laughs> move to the beat of jazz. Others more suitable for corncob TV than NFL fit. But the Bears think this season is going to be a hit and not a coffin flop. Let's take out the Soldier Field where baby of the year Bart Harley Jarvis watching Justin <laughs> Fields Bar- put Jarvis. on a show against... Bar- yeah, they're, they're- I hope you die, Bart <laughs> Harley Jarvis. <laughs> Again, these are all references that if you don't know the show, he, the, yeah. Bart Harley Jarvis was like a handsome baby of the year contest. Uh, he was like the that. bad boy in that year's contest. In the baby contest. Yeah, and he had a very flat back of the head. <laughs> And uh, watching Justin Fields put on a show against Tennessee, who tells the Titans defense, you're not part of the turbo team. You don't run with us. He's zipping around like a metalloid maniac fighting for the end zone. He finishes 56 yard score fields three for three, 129 yards, 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos, <laughs> and two touchdowns. <laughs> two touchdowns. And two touchdowns. Uh, five burgers, also, five fries. It's that stat line for Justin Fields. He had. Three completed passes. I think it was three for three and 129 yards. But the air yards, like the, for how far he threw the ball, was like two yards because they're both – he had two screen passes. Yeah. They got taken for like 50 yards. Yeah. So it's a, a very, very funny uh, moments for, for him. You know who I met this morning? Who's that? Bernie Kozar. Oh, yeah. Bernie's, Bernie's a great guy. How'd it go? Well, he and I both do commercials for QC Kinetics, and the QC Kinetics people were in this morning, and so we were going to to meet them or whatever, and I got the word that they were down the hall in one of the other studios, so I stuck my head in. I didn't know Bernie was going to be in there. I I didn't know what was happening, just that I was going to poke my head in and say hi. And Bernie goes, Alan Cox. He goes, man, I'm a big fan of yours. And I'm like, really? Really? He just could not have been nicer. Oh, He's a great the guy. show's great. I, I don't know how I've never met Bernie Kozar before. I met him in a but, green room with doing a show with Polk a few years ago, and we just sat and talked and just got to know each other a little bit. Yeah, we He's, he's a, a really, minutes. really nice guy and just, like, really personable guy. Very nice dude. So that was uh, part of my morning. I love Bernie. Uh, we have Bureau Chiefs out on Long Island. If you listen to the show on iHeartRadio and you do it from out of state, tell me where you are. I'll make sure that you are back on our Bureau Chief map here. But way out on Long Island. You think Bernie's going to vote for Pound Cake for Best Sports Talker? Bernie, if you're listening, Cleveland scene, go to the website. Bernie, if you are as big a fan of yeah. this show as you told me you were, screenshot it. Clevescene.com, vote for Cody Brown, Best Sports Talker. We get the imprimatur of one Bernard Kozar. Uh, what could be better than that? Pound cake, what did Bernie Kozar do? What do you mean, what did he do? Like, who is he? He's a former football player, right? Yeah, what position? I'm guessing if he has notoriety, I'm a uh, quarterback. Yeah! For what, job. Cleveland's for best what sports team? talker. 
If he stuck around here, probably the Browns. <laughs> That's why you should vote for him. <laughs> probably the Browns. Pound cake knew who you were, Bernie. Bernie Kosar yeah. was probably on the Browns. <laughs> well, if he stuck around here, I can't imagine someone's like, oh, no, I played for the Seattle Mariners. The L.A. Rams. <laughs> no. and I, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I decamped. Seattle who? The Mariners. <laughs> What's the Seattle football team? Oh, wait. Uh, Russell... Russell, uh, not Brandon. Because he's Ru- married Russell to Sierra. Wilson. That's how yeah, you know Russell. Yeah. Sierra. Seattle. You White. know he's not with Seattle anymore, right? Well, that's how I know he was on that team, though. Yeah. White, White Hawks. <laughs> Tell me. White Hawks. Seattle White Hawks. What is it? Why is it going to be close. White Pancake? You're close. It is. Hawks the is C- in the name. Seahawks. Hey. Seahawks. Okay. Sports talk. Seahawks. What team is Russell Wilson with now? Hell if I know. That's right. The Topeka Hell if I knows. Yep. That logo is wild. It's part elephant, part rhino. You nailed it. Uh, out there on Long Island, though, we got some uh, bureau chiefs. Stop laughing at me, Bill. No, I'm I laughing at Hell if I know. <laughs> the fact that it's an elephant and rhino <laughs> together. Yeah. I'm not laughing at you, stupid. Alan made a funny joke. I'm laughing at that. <laughs> Uh, the Little League Softball World Series was won by the girls out in Massapequa, New York, Long Island. They beat North Carolina five to do five to two. This was on ABC, Massapequa, Long Island. The girls there, Little League Softball World Series. North Carolina, they're down to their final out. Up in the air, back to Olivia. Oh, excitement everywhere. Excitement. Think about that. You know, there's a lot of famous people that came out of Massapequa, Long Island. Oh, like who? Two come to mind. There's one, Jerome Seinfeld, and uh, one, Alec Baldwin. They're both, of course, uh, from Massapequa, Long Island. I had, many years ago uh, in another city, I had an intern from Massapequa. And um, it's out there on Long Island, and... Congratulations. By the way, right next to Amityville, Massapequa on Long Island, right next to Amityville. You know what Amityville is famous for, Pound Cake? Uh, Ron Reynolds shirtless in their movie of the Am- Amityville. Of course, he remembers the, uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 the terrible, terrible Ryan Reynolds remake, but the original. He was super shredded. Oh, God, this theme just, I would piss myself when I heard this as a kid. I watched the original Amityville horror when I was a kid. I was probably eight years old or whatever. And it was on network television, so they probably chopped a bunch out. But holy Christ. Between The Exorcist and the Amityville Horror. And, of course, Amityville Horror was uh, adapted from a book that everybody swore was true, right? And the guy comes out years later and says it was all made up. But the, the hook with the Amityville Horror was that it was a true story of a family who purchased a house out on Amityville, Long Island. And it was haunted by the ghosts of this kid who had killed his family. And this was a story, and they built this. Uh, there was a, like a local tourism thing just <clears throat> built on this Amityville house. Yeah, but nowadays it'll just be haunted by the interest rate. Am I right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, Bill Squire in uh, Cincinnati next month <laughs> <laughs> at and, the and, Go Bananas Comedy Club. In, in Columbus, uh, August 31st. But uh, that Amityville horror theme with those kids singing. Lalo Schifrin, who, if you if you know your film composers, he's the guy that did the original Mission Impossible theme. He did a bunch. He did Cool Aunt Luke. He did, like, uh, 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 Rush Hour. Hey, he did the Rush Hour music, Bill. Oh, man. Love Rush Hour. That's a good one. You could understand the words that were coming out of his mouth because it was all music. But, uh, the, yeah, the Amityville horror, of course, for anybody paying attention would have immediately known that that was all made up. But a lot of people bought into it, and so it really made that movie a big deal. When I was a kid, 9 or 10 years old, uh, I, I just peed my pants watching that movie. There's, like, blood coming out of the walls, and there was goop in the toilet. Just like Eric out there in Summit <laughs> County, right? They had to replace the yeah. whole commode out of the um, out of the family's house. What was the family name in the Amityville Horror? The, it was the... No. Oh, the Vils. I remember everybody, the Lutzes, L-U-T-Z, the Lutzes were the family who, the the, the DeLeo, 
for DeFeo family. Isn't that like what they say when you call someone stupid? You're a Lutz? Oh, you're a Putz. Sure. Putz is fine, too. Mm. Do you call someone a Lutz? No. Um, I think not a Lutz. if you're not on 30 Rock. Or if you're not a figure skater. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that a move? Triple a, tri- Lutz? a triple Lutz? I think so. Yeah. Uh, how how haunted of a house would you buy? Me? Like None. It's never. Not, not, like, it's just like cabinet slam. Nope. That's all it does. Like I'm not doing slam. any of that. I'm not You're buying. You're going to deal on it. I don't care. I told you guys you could not pay me to live in a murder house. You we didn't say murder. Haunted. Haunted. That, how else is it going to be haunted? By a lot of things. People, somebody died there. From murders. Died. No, they're, they're trying to get your attention. They're trying to help. They they want to use you as a vessel to solve their murder. They're not actually trying to hurt you. I don't want to solve you. a murder. If you believe in a haunting, it's just a ghost that can't move on. There's nothing to saying they were murdered. They might have died in their sleep. Yeah. And they're haunting the house. So now but I for be this a, scenario, they were I have murdered. to be a ghost therapist now. I you have don't to have to no, do ghost anything. Help her. <laughs> but they're just You like, don't have to do anything. They're not they're not taking over your body. They're not trying to make you do any murders. They but they're just, banging around in my cabinets. Yeah. Moving my forks. They're peckish. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. Even in the afterlife, they're looking for set they're feeling a little snacky. They're looking this, for some Lorna Dunes. This house has everything I ever want on my checklist. Yes. yes. And ghosts. And how much does it cost? It's five thousand dollars. It's in your price range. So $5,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alan's, Alan's even overshooting. <laughs> $39.99, it will throw in a brand new chest freezer. But here's the thing. Then every day you got to deal with that. Not every day. Not every day. But Whenever they feel like it. Yes, there have- is uh, there is uncertain spectral activity. You couldn't get yeah. zero sleep, and then your performance at work starts to slip, and then you lose your job, and then now you can't pay your bills, and then you go crazy because you're at a bottom, or and then you end up tre- killing yourself. It turns you into a bottom. Yes. Pound cake. I've- Look into this. I'm halfway there, so it's okay. See? Um, no. Or conversely, sleep? it is a friendly ghost and helps you with things. Why does it have like to throw be a party. terrible? Why does everybody assume he if you believe in this He said it was going to be stuff? banging on cabinets and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's trying to get, get a party going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't you know how to party? Yeah. <laughs> you bang on some cabinets. cabinets. No, it's it's going to be a little spooky, but like, it's not trying to hurt you. It's just doing some spooky stuff around the house. How do you know it's not trying to hurt you? Because it's, it's not. not hurting that's, you. Because I'm telling you that scenario. It's not trying to. It's hurt not you. slashing your arms while you sleep. Mm-hmm. It's not trying to put a pillow over your head. But like when you come back, like when you wake up in the morning, all the drawers are pulled out. In the cabinets that are... That's annoying. It's but annoying, it, but you're getting a deal, bro. But also, if it only rises to the level of annoying and not threatening or nefarious, why does everybody think that if you believe in ghosts, why do people always think that they're that they're uh, their intent is to harm people? They're why don't mad. people huh? They're mad. They're mad about what? Being they a ghost? unfinished business. We all have unfinished business all the time. <laughs> don't make me mad. It just will go away. That's oh. still yeah, alive. I'll procrastinate. Still on, it's still on my to-do list. All but right. Also, well, anything that I don't get done in this life and I'm dead, like, like I don't care. I don't care. Like, what am I trying to do? Like, oh, uh, even if I got murdered, be like, okay, but these ghosts go are solve my murder. they're to avenge things. They're not like, oh man, it's I never got to go skydiving. Like that's not the unfinished business you that they have. You don't know what they're unfinished, but you only know the movies you've watched and the books you've written yeah, that are all about ghosts. Research, that- Alan. That's the research I've <laughs> yeah. done yeah. from my paranormal activity caught on camera, volume two well, on Lifetime who, Channel. Then who better to move into a super cheap haunted house than you. I'm not you, living in a haunted house. You know house. how to bob and weave. What I'm not living in a murder house. I'm not living in any of this. So what if you, you found out that there was spectral activity in the house that you and Brian share I now. I already want to leave the house that Brian and I share. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with the ghosts, though. Uh, if you found that out, you'd move out? My house is haunted by the ghost of Michaels, okay? Do you understand that we can't make it 43 feet in my house without something being labeled? Hey, at least you know that the drawers will never be pulled out. <laughs> Forks, <laughs> knives. At least if yeah. everything comes out, we know They're where to put it back. They're super neat. I'm all not right. living in a ghost house. I'm not living in a murder house. I don't care how cheap it is. I'm not. My wife's favorite movie is The Shining. And so years ago, when we were visiting some friends in Denver, we spent a night at that Shining Hotel out in, in Estes, Colorado, right? Where it was, uh, we stayed in the haunted room and That's all this kind story. of stuff. That's a true story. What's that? The, the we did stay there. That is a true story. No, yes. the uh, um, movie. And so the we stayed here, story. and they love to tell you these stories about the hauntings in the hotel. It's the Stanley Hotel, and we stayed there and whatever. And I was like, ooh, tell me a story, because I'm playing along. And the guy goes, one of the ghosts is a ghost of one of the maids. And we had some guests come back, 
and all of their clothes were unpacked and put in the closet. And I'm like, that's helpful. That's not. Right, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe you'll that's get a like helpful you, ghost. You should charge more for that. Mm-hmm. That's not scary. All of my clothes were hung up. I'm like, you don't know who you're dealing with, homie. That's my dream. Put that in the package. There's like the yeah. romance package. There's the ghostly maid package. The OCD package. Yeah. All right, I got a break here. Want to send a text? 35192, allencoxshow.com to watch, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMR.